God loved you anyway. And if God didn't love me anyway, there would be no way I could make it to heaven. Praise God. Look at somebody tell him he loved me anyway. Look at somebody tell him he loved you too anyway. God is so awesome. Let's sing that, sing that again. I want to sing that chorus again. But you love me anyway. It's like nothing in life. And I And the seeds 
obey him. Stretch forth your hands this way. Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, I think about so many years, and I mean years, we have stood before you and stood together and read your word and worshiped together. It is an honor. It is a privilege. But sometimes we become calloused to it. We become used to it. We become thinking that as long as we just do that, everything's all right. And we don't put ourselves in it. We don't engage. I ask you tonight, Lord, today to help us, Lord, to, although we've done it for years, to remember to still engage. To still glean from the Word because the Word is alive and powerful and you never run out of learning. And I'll never run out of possibilities of reaping from the Word so that we can sow it back into somebody else or other situations. I ask you right now, Lord, to help us, God, to live in this moment right now. Not yesterday, it's gone. Not tomorrow, it's not here yet. What we're going to do is right now, God, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day for our freedom. Today is the day for us to understand how to make it tomorrow, how to get rid of yesterday. Help us, Lord, to live in right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said? Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Now, uh, I'm going to kind of go through the first part kind of quickly, so y'all kind of hang on, all right? Look at somebody say, hang on. Hang on. All right. All right. With faith the size of a mustard seed, nothing shall be impossible. Remember I talked about it on your fingernail? You can have a hundred mustard seeds on your fingernail. A hundred. And God says one of those can move a mountain the size of Mount Everest. Wow. One little bitty thing. A hundred of them can fit on your fingernail. But they can move a mountain the size of Mount Everest. Nothing is impossible. God, a little damn will do you. We're just gonna, gonna, gonna talk about, we're gonna, we're gonna pick up from last week. Every man has been given a measure of faith. Amen? And so, so watch this now. The reason God has given you this measure of faith is because everybody, I'll say everybody. Everybody, everybody in this church has been given a chore or a mission. They've been given a chance, an opportunity. They've been given challenges, which is problems, but they've been given confidence, which is and able of faith to get above the challenges to, to take a hold of the chance and move in our shore. Amen. Uh, Romans 12 and 3 says God has given every man a measure of faith. And it also says in Matthew 7 and 20, faith is a grain of mustard seed. You can say this mountain be removed. And he was pointing at the mountain. Be thou removed. Jesus didn't have PowerPoints. Amen. He didn't have a TV ministry. All he had was nature around him. And he pointed to nature as he taught. As he was a teacher. As he was rabbi. Okay, so now, now, remember now, now, we must, always read, we must all realize that we've all got a chore. We've got something to do for God. Everybody, say again, everybody has something to do for God. But his plan, Satan's plan, is to throw up stumbling blocks and walls. There was a stumbling block in a wall. The stumbling block impedes your progress. Walls stop your progress. One slows you down, the other one stops you. And so this is, this is his plan. And of course, we talked about it last week, so I'm not going to go into it. His, his weapons are distractions, distortions, and divisions. Because his purpose is to ultimately, without a shadow of a doubt, stop you dead in your tracks. And so, so the challenges that are ahead, or I could just say problems, problems, problems. Here's the problems in this verse. First, that we didn't read our everything, but it'd be an exhausting day. So it was an unending, uh, uneasy task. They'd already been ministering to all these people. And as soon as they get on the boat and go through this storm, they're going to go ahead to the other side and they're going to engage with the devil head on. So here they are, they're ministering to people all day long. They're told to get in the boat. In the boat, they're not expecting they've got this storm. So it's an exhausting day. Uh, it's, 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 it's une uneasy timing because there's a, a severe storm and there's an uneasy temptation because the sinking ship was about them and in the middle of the sinking ship was a sleeping Savior. But you got to remember, Jesus led them into the storm. He, they followed right into a crisis. And remember, God's will is not always smooth sailing. Jesus led them into the storm. They followed right into a crisis. 
There's times I can think about in my own life when I know I was following God, I know I was hearing His voice, I know I was obeying Him, <coughs> and I went right into the middle of some of the worst storms I've ever faced. I went right into some of the worst things that I'd ever experienced. And Satan would have me believe that Jesus was asleep at the wheel because why am I following Him am I going to have these problems? Why am I paying attention to what he's saying? Reading his word, crossing every T, dotting every I. Why am I going through some terrible things? Remember this again. This is taking up from last week and we're getting ready to jump into fresh stuff. Faith takes Satan's stumbling blocks and walls and accepts them as challenges. Now, you've got a choice. You can either... Just say, God, I don't know why you allowed this. I don't understand why I'm going through this. And so, you know what, God, I think I'm going to quit. I think I'm going to lay down. I think I'm just going to call it in. Just, just, just go ahead and, and, and bring her in for tonight because obviously, God, you're not paying attention to me. You don't see what I'm going through, not realizing the whole time that he was with you the whole time, the whole period, and he never was. Let go of your hands. So now, now let's watch this. There's a confidence in our faith. All right, get ready. I love that. Look at there. There's a confidence in our faith. The Bible says, therefore, cast out away your confidence in God. Wherefore, there's a, a great reward coming. That word cast aside your confidence literally means a soldier on the battlefield getting afraid in the middle of the battle. Fearful of what's coming at him, throwing down his sword, that's casting it away, throwing down his confidence, throwing away his sword, turning around and running. Wow. Have you ever done that? Please don't raise your hand. Okay, so here we go. Confidence is the confidence of faith. Let's look, look, look. Through faith, we see that Abel worshiped. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, it says, by faith, or by, but by faith, Abraham offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by even though he being dead, yet he spoke. Moses, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, and he stood, and God used him to walk into adversity and to walk out successfully. In warfare, the whole, I like this last part of Hebrews 11 because it talks about all the people uh, uh, that, that quenched, that they walked through, uh, through, through faith, they subdued kingdoms and wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed vain in fight, turned to flight the enemies of the aliens, women received their, their dead raised again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they may obtain a better resurrection. Others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yet moreover of bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskin and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, Receive not the promise, God having providing something better for us, that they without us should be made perfect. So again, whatever you're having to go through, God is going to give you the power if you can think about that mustard seed faith. Watch this. The smallest measure can move you from the impossible to the possible. Look how impossible spelled. I'm possible. I'm possible. I'm possible because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm possible because I know my Redeemer liveth. I'm possible because faith is a grain of mustard seed. You can say this mountain, be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and it will be done for you. The smallest measure can move you from the impossible to the possible. Somebody say amen on that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Now, now I'm, getting, I'm not going to keep you much longer. Some of y'all are going, please don't. Just remember, that mustard seed can move a mountain. And that mustard seed can move a mountain, it can speed up this sermon. Uh, oh, come on now. <laughs> All right, here we go. 
Here we go. Lessons of faith. Uh, uh, lessons of faith was upon them. In this story, there's two rebukes. Jesus rebukes the storm, and Jesus rebukes his disciples. Wow. Wait a minute. Let that sink in. Jesus rebukes the storm that's coming against his disciples. They're crying out for help. And then he rebukes them. Wow. What kind of lesson is he teaching here? He's trying to show them the danger of little faith. He's trying to show them the danger of just trying to get by. He's trying to show the danger of a drive-by relationship with God. Anybody ever seen a drive-by relationship with God? I've seen them. Uh, uh, I'll be in Walmart and come say, pray for me, preacher. I got this going on tomorrow. And I say, why don't you pray for it yourself? Well, I, God don't hear my prayers. Really? That's not what my Bible says. Oh, why don't you get your pastor? Oh, that's right. Let us know, no, we can't because we don't go to church anywhere. We've got no pastor. We've got nothing. Matter of fact, what we ever, anything we ever need, we just get off television. Really? Little faith. So there's two rebukes and there's two comments. The first calming is without the sea. The second calming is within, and that's the disciples. So watch this now. Here we go. This, this, this is where I wanted to get to last week and never got a chance to. Sometimes all you need is faith as big as a mustard seed, and God will do the rest. What I have discovered is if I do what I can do, God will do what I can't do. The problem is we don't do We say, God fail us. Wait a minute. God didn't fail you. God's waiting for you to do what you can do, and then he'll do what you can't do. Because when you do what you can do, then you ignite your faith. And when you ignite your faith, then God does what you can't do. But when you sit back and just wait for things to fall into place and do nothing on your own, you have not ignited your faith. But instead, your faith lies dormant. Remember I told you about the, the seeds they found in the pyramids, thousands of years old. These seeds were thousands of years old. They took these seeds and they were there in bags. They told that the Pharaoh was going to eat them into the other world. So they had these bags of seed. They took the bags of seed and they took them outside and they planted them and they grew. Those seeds were thousands of years old. But they never grew because they never touched the soil. The germination process didn't take place. The same way in our own life. Remember what God moved in our life? We don't pray. We want somebody else to pray for us. We don't seek Him. We want somebody else to seek Him for us. We don't read His Word. We want somebody to read it for us. God is not a lucky charm. God is not a charm bracelet. God wants us to have a relationship with Him. And so because of that relationship, when we begin to do what we can do, what happens is now we start putting the seed in the soil. And once you put the seed in the soil, you back away and let the seed do its own thing. All you do is just cultivate it from here on out. The seed knows what to do. The seed will take care of itself. But in order for it to do anything, it's got to be put in the soil. So, so, watch this. And get close to the end. All right, ready? There's a difference in little faith and faith of the grain of mustard seed. He said, oh, yeah, little faith. Watch it out. Ready? Let's go for this thing. Me, faith, seed size equals mountains. Move me plus faith times the size of a seed can move mountains. Ready? Little faith, mustard seed faith. Little faith is puny. Mustard seed faith is powerful. Still the same size. Still only a hundred on your thumb. A hundred. Still the same size. But mustard seed faith is powerful. It's not puny. Mustard seed faith is confidence in God. Puny faith is confidence in self. You know, uh, I, just this week I can think about all the things that I wind up getting in the middle of in the last few weeks. The stuff that I wind up getting in the middle of. I didn't ask for it. I wasn't looking for it. But, but, but God put me in the middle of some of the weirdest, some of the hardest, some of the most strenuous things to help people with. 
And as I got put in there with them, instead of me going and going, oh no, oh no, oh no, I went in saying, God, I don't have this, but you do. And every time, every time, God showed himself strong. And people ask me all the time, how can you be so confident when you go in situations like that? And I go, because I know I'm not going alone. I'm in God's pocket. I'm in his pocket. I'm not doing it by myself. So, so, it's powerful because there's confidence in God. I know God's not going to let me down. I don't always understand him. I don't always understand his timing. I don't understand why he does what he does, but he's God. Just for an example, Last night, I know, and if, if Carolina had a one, I'd be telling the same thing. Last night, with just six seconds to go, and they were shooting, and it was down by three, Duke was down by three points. And I told Linda, I said, Linda, they need to shoot a three-pointer, but they'd already tried to shoot a three-pointer, and of course they got shot down before they got across the line, so they couldn't shoot a three-pointer. So they're taking it in, and when they go to take it in, I said, they need a three-pointer, but they're, they're going for a two-pointer. You know what I told Linda? I said, Coach K got something up his sleeve. Don't know what it is, but there's something on it up his sleeve. And when we went to shoot the free throw, instead of shooting the free throw, free, the flip free throw, he threw it against the backboard, and it bounced back, and somebody caught it. And then they took it and they made the three-pointer the three because instead of going for the two points, they did something absolutely crazy. One of those trick plays. They threw it up against the backboard. It came back. Everybody's still trying to figure out what's going on, and they tied the game. I looked over and I said, no, that ain't some awesome coaching. I don't know what it is. And after the game, they asked him, said, how, how in the world did, did you know how to do that? Watch this. He said, because one of the coaches and I have worked this play out thousands of times already. We had never seen it. But the coach said, one day you're going to be in this bind and you're going to need to do this. And so, and it was one of the former players. Yeah, it was the coach. He said, he said, here's what I want you to do. Practice going against the backboard and, and make it go where you want it to go so your guys can catch it so they can get it back to you so you can shoot. And so, again, Thousands of times we practiced it, but you know what? We had never seen it. They practiced it in the dark, but it was revealed in the light. The same way, a lot of times God's doing something, you're thinking, what in the world is he doing? You can have confidence in him because although you might not know what's going on, he's already seen in the dark what's going to happen to you when you're in the light. Also, it's a conviction that God is bigger than the problem. Little faith is the conviction is the problem is bigger than God. Huh. Wow. Do you look at your problem as bigger than God or do you see your God as bigger than your problem? And then finally, mustard seed faith, you have conquest, you have gain. Little faith, you have confusion and you have loss. Remember, and we're getting ready. Y'all look at me. Y'all looking like a mule looking at a new gate. Get ready. Tell somebody say, I can smell McDonald's now. I can smell it very quickly. I smell it by faith. All right. Of course, you ain't smelling much, but smell it by faith. All right. Get ready. <laughs> Whatever's made out of, yeah. Faith in God doesn't make things easy. It makes things easy. It doesn't make things easy. It makes things possible. Wow. I love it. I have a mustard seed. And I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> DC, come here. I have a, come on up here, Jeff. Y'all guys come on up here. One Easter, before I started pastoring, before I even started preaching, I knew I was, I was playing in a band. 
when I wasn't uh, preaching. And as I was serving God, one well, Easter morning, my mother-in-law, who was a Jehovah's Witness, had always told us, don't tell me about God, I don't want to hear about God, I don't want you to tell me a thing about God, I know all I need to know, I don't want to hear it. And invariably, and even in, in smaller times, and even at times laid on the floor in the kingdom hall, or laid on the pew in the kingdom hall during some of their services. So my mother-in-law said, I don't want to hear it. If this is what y'all want to do, that's fine, but I don't want to hear it. One Easter morning, my mother-in-law called me and said, what time does church start? I said, well, Sunday school starts at 10. She said, that ain't what I'm asking. What time does church start? I said, well, church starts at 11. She says, okay, I'll see you then. Save me a seat. Just before 11 o'clock, my mother-in-law come prancing on in there. She sat down beside us at the end of the service. When the preacher gave the altar call, she jumped right up and she went right to the altar. Got a chance to help lead her to the Lord that morning. When the service was over, she looked at me and she says, Wow. So I just want you to know something. This service is not what turned me to God. She said, This service is not even what caused me to get saved this morning. I said, Well, what did cause you to get saved this morning? She said, I've watched you and my daughter serve God for many years. And she said, things were never easy, but once you started serving God, things got tough for you. And she said, I saw you get in trouble time and time again. Saw your youngins get sick, saw things happen. So I saw things happen time and time again. She said, but Every time, every time, she said, I watched God come through for you like nobody's business. She said, I saw what he could do. I saw what he did. I saw how he handled every situation. He never let you down. She said, to God, I serve it like that. She says, I want to serve the God you serve. And that stuck in my head. She's still serving God. But that stuck in my head that I had no idea that as I was learning how to cultivate my faith, my wife and I cultivate our faith and plant that seed and trust God and let that mustard seed sprout up. And we saw mountain after mountain after mountain move. We had no idea the impact it was having on my Jehovah's Witness mother-in-law. People are watching you. Your testimony can be the cause of many people giving it to God. Everybody stand. You say, oh, I've got just a little bit of faith. That's all. Jesus, that's all you need. When we first got saved, I had no idea what I was even doing. Uh, I had no idea. I just know that Here's the craziest thing. I start going to church. Next thing you know, I get moved into engineering at Procter & Gamble and I'm there all day long as an electrical designer with another electrical designer, just me and him all day long. And he was a church of God in Christ, bishop, elder. And he started teaching me how to study God's Word. He started teaching me how to get in there. He started teaching me how to believe God for miracles. All day long. We still did our work, but all day long, he invested in me and invested in me and invested in me. Very powerful man. And I watched the mustard seed faith time and time and time again do something great.
Let me ask you a question. With every head bowed, every eye closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. The whole purpose of the day is not to beat anybody down. Nobody, nobody needs a beat down. The world beats us down enough. Today is the day to be lifted up. With every head down, every eye closed, I'm going to ask you something. Nobody else is going to look around. I want you to look at your life. Are you living by little faith or mustard seed faith? Is your faith puny? Is it confidence in yourself and what you can do? Do you see your problems as bigger than God? Is there a lot of confusion in your life and loss? Or do you have that mustard seed faith where it's powerful? You have confidence in God. You have a conviction that God is bigger than your problem. And you see a lot of gains, not a bunch of losses. Right, every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. Would you say, Pastor, you ain't got to hold your hands up long. This is just part of activating your faith. It's getting it in the ground. It's taking the seed out of the bag and putting it in the ground. And it starts with confession. Have you been putting confidence in self? Have you been seeing the problem bigger than God? Have you been confused and suffered loss? You've been a victim of your own little faith and didn't even know it. And every head bowed, every eye closed. Would you put that hand up and say, you know, yep, I, I've been a victim of my own little faith. I, I, I didn't even realize it. I, I see it. Have you seen your problems through your own strength? And have you seen your problems bigger? Thank God. Again, just, just, just slide up. Slide up your hands. There you go. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. What you just did was you took your seed out of the bag. Now we're going to get ready to put it in some fertile ground. If you're here today and you're wanting God to help you have some uncheckable confidence in Him, Nobody's looking around. Would you put that hand up? Yes, I want that unshakable confidence in God. Yes. Yes. That bag just got ripped open. The ground opened up. Do you want to live by conviction that God is bigger than any problem you ever faced? Did you just lift that hand up? Guess what? You just dropped that seed. That ground's going in. You're going to put the ground around it to see that mustard seed faith grow. Are you ready for conquest and gain versus loss and confusion? One more time, we just put that hand up. Yes. Guess what? Today is your day. Through faith in God, I want y'all to say this with me. Father, Father I believe your word. I believe your word. It is greater. It is greater than what I think. Than what I think. It is greater. It is greater than what I have experienced. Than what I have experienced. It is greater. It is greater than what I'm facing. It is, greater it is greater than anything coming my way. I trust God. I trust God. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. And I'm going to believe that you got this. That you got this. And it's something special. It's taking place at this moment. A powerful, powerful confidence in you. A powerful conviction that you are bigger than my problems. And a powerful conquest. I will no longer lay down in loss, but I will stand up in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. Now, one more thing, I want you to keep your head bowed for a minute. One more thing. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I'm not going to make an example out of you. I just want to know because, because I want to pray with you. Uh, we can do it all together right now. Nobody even, even know you're out here, but just me and you. And God, of course. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, would you just slip that hand up and say, I want to know, but I, I don't. And are you here today and you're not sure? 
may, you may not, you have no idea. You, 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 you did, you asked God into your life years ago and things happened and you backed away and now you're not even sure of your own standing and relationship with God. Nobody looking around, every eye closed, every head bowed. Just lift that hand up and say, yes, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Maybe not as close to you. Everything's fine as far as your relationship of knowing you're going to heaven. But you're still having a tough time, tough time down here because you're not on good talking terms with him. You're not on good uh, communication with him. And, and you're not sure how he wants to do what he wants to do in your life because you have moved away from him. Nobody looking around would just slide their hand and say, that, that's me. I'm saved, but 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 I, I'm, I'm sour. I've grown sour. I'm saved, but I've grown sour. I, I need God. Okay, let's so all pray together. Ready? Father, Father I, need you I need you to come into my life again. again. I rededicate, I rededicate my, heart, my heart, my soul, my everything to you. I know that you are my God, and I trust you. I thank you that you are my Savior. I give this day to you. Father, I thank you for restoration. I thank you for new life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. You don't know the happy have grace. And now, we're going to be, uh, started the caretaker the caretaker uh, Bible study. We've gone through two weeks of it. And this has been some pretty intense stuff. It's, it's not just a, a, a little mechanical thing. It's not just a little uh, a get or done thing. What it is, is, is a, 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 a full plow down, lower the plow down, taking our time because it's very important. Everybody learns something about caretaking. And you find it also it's more than just taking care of sick folks. It's a whole lot more than just taking care of sick folks. Caretakers can be teachers, firemen, policemen, uh, uh, pastors, mothers, fathers. Getting ready, I'm not sure if it's going to be this Tuesday night or not, but get ready to talk about being the meat in the sandwich. You're sandwiched. You're taking care of the elderly. And you're taking care of those below you. And you're caught in the middle. So there's not a whole lot of breaks. So you feel like you're being eaten alive. You're the meat man sandwich. While those above you need you, while those below you need you. When I say below you, I'm not talking about status. I'm talking about younger people or somebody that needs something. You got two different generations. You're doing you're ministering to two different generations. You're the sandwich in the middle, and that meat is getting thin. What do you do? That's coming up shortly. It's been a blessing to me, and I, I know it's been a blessing to many. So don't forget, Tuesday night, we're talking about caregivers. And if you know somebody that's a caregiver, and they, they don't know about this, tell them. Tell them about it. Because because it's something good coming. I promise you. Everybody happy? You happy and you know it? Okay. Brother Baker. <laughs> the white headed Baker. Okay. <laughs> the one with the beard still can't do it. Okay. The one on the front row. <laughs> we just miss us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your house today, Lord. We praise you, honor you, glorify you for all these things that we've heard today and maybe take it into our heart. We have to carry it into the world and share it with someone else. We praise you and honor you again. In Jesus' name, amen.